This video is part one of a two-part tutorial on rotoscoping in Create Studio Pro. Rotoscoping is the process of manually altering your video one frame at a time. In part two, you will see how to use rotoscoping to make the spy sneaking around action look more natural. In this tutorial, I will use rotoscoping to reveal objects in the spy's jacket and move the objects to match the jacket movement. Keep watching and I'll show you how. This is Randy with another Crate Studio Pro tutorial. While I'll be demonstrating rotoscoping with the spy character, the technique can be used on a number of characters or objects in Crate Studio. To demonstrate how rotoscoping can make your scene look more realistic, here is a side by side comparison. The spy on the right is using rotoscoping to move the objects as the jacket moves. Let's see that again in slow motion. Having the objects move with the jacket makes the scene more natural. Let's take a look at the timeline where the spy reveals objects in his jacket. What I really like about this action is that you can put together a sequence of them back to back to have the spy reveal multiple items each time he closes and opens his jacket. Notice the track above the spy. This is where the objects are revealed when the spy opens his jacket. Let's put the playhead one frame before the object track and advance the playhead one frame. Unfortunately, there are no keyboard shortcuts to advance one frame or back up a frame, so we will use the advance a frame and back up a frame icons above the timeline. When I advance the playhead one frame, notice the jacket goes from closed to fully open. That is convenient as it means no masking is required. Now notice the diamonds on the object track. They are positioned keyframes to make subtle movements of the object as the jacket moves. It is these position animations every frame that provide the rotoscoping. It is labor intensive, but I will share tips to make the process easier. So let's start from scratch and see how it is done. Drag the spy onto the canvas and here I will change the first action to idle and add two revealing his jacket actions, one right after the other. Tip, to fill the spy's actions for the entire timeline, click on this icon which is underneath the timeline. Next, find the spot on the timeline where the jacket goes from closed to open. This is where you want to add the object or objects to reveal. In my case, I will drag a teddy bear onto the canvas and resize the bear and place it on top of the jacket. Here is an extremely important tip. Use Command G or Control G if you are on a PC to group the teddy bear. Having a group will make moving all the future objects much, much easier, as you will see in a few minutes. With the playhead at the start of the group, hit the P key, which is the keyboard shortcut that will add a position animation to the group. Click on the keyframe on the far right and drag it forward until it stops. This will place it one frame past the starting keyframe. Now toggle between the backup and advanced frame icons to determine how much the jacket moves between the two keyframes. To me, this looks about two pixels up and five pixels to the right. So on the keyboard, I will hit the up arrow two times and the right arrow five times. Great. Now hit P to add another position animation and drag the last keyframe left on the timeline. Again, I will toggle back and forth and estimate the amount the jacket is moving. For the size of this teddy bear, it appears to be three pixels up and three pixels right. Tip, making the canvas larger can help make positioning the object easier. So here I zoom to 200%. We will continue to add position animations using the keyboard P key and slide the end keyframe all the way to the left 
until the spy stops moving his jacket. I will fast forward through that process. You know, you should add music while the viewers watch this section. Well, if it isn't my interrupting neighbor. That is a good idea. Why don't you work on that while I return back to the tutorial? I'm on it. Okay, at this point the spy is not moving his jacket and so I will move the playhead to the time he starts moving the jacket again. Now that I've found the spot, I will back up one frame and hit the P key to add another position animation. Just like before, drag the end keyframe all the way to the left and repeat the process until the jacket is closing. Once again, I will fast forward through this section. And I am back with your fast forward music. What do you think? I like it. Thanks, neighbor. You're welcome. Okay, as I step through when the spy closes the jacket, I see that it takes four frames and there is a bit of twisting of the jacket. So for those last four frames, when I add a position animation by hitting the P key, I will click on Scale and Rotation in the Properties menu. Tip! It is also possible to hit the S key and the R key to include Scale and Rotation along with the position animation. In fact, you can press P, S, and R at the same time to add the animation with all three properties. Now, not only can we change position, but we can change the size and rotation of the objects to this keyframe. Again, drag the last keyframe all the way to the left. Now eyeball how to position, rotate, and size the object. Do the same for the last three frames. At the point where the jacket is fully closed, trim the track so the object will disappear. Oops, I trimmed too much, so I need to extend the track one more frame. Alright, now the object disappears when the jacket is closed. Now is the time to add a different object where the spy does the reveal action a second time. With the object track selected, enter Command D to duplicate the track. Next, find the frame where the spy's jacket opens up and drag the duplicated track to that frame. For this second reveal, I will change the teddy bear to a rabbit. In fact, I will make it two rabbits. And because I created a group on the teddy bear before creating the position animations, I don't have to repeat the rotoscoping again. By double clicking on the group, Create Studio will open up the group editor and we can make our changes there. So let's search for a bunny and drag it onto the canvas. Since I want two bunnies, I will position the first one slightly to the left of the bear. It is okay to exceed the boundaries of the original object. To add the second bunny, duplicate the one that was just added and relocate it. Delete the bear by clicking on its track and hitting the delete key. To close the group, click on the back to the main timeline at the top of the screen. Now there are two bunnies in the spy's jacket. And clicking on the play button, you can see the bunnies have acquired the same movements that were applied to the teddy bear. No need to redo all the position animations. That is the beauty of grouping the object or objects before adding the rotoscoping. There you go. That is how to make the spy realistically reveal multiple objects in his jacket. Hey everybody, 
have a good day and happy creating.